Hi, welcome to the next edition of the CTQ Smart Levers. And today, Ramanand, we want to talk about the book Alchemy by Rory Sutherland. Ramanand, tell me, what was your main takeaway from this book? Hi, Harish. So, Alchemy is one of our favorite, new favorite books by Rory Sutherland, someone that we, I think we didn't know of for too long. It's been a couple of years since we've been following him. He has a very interesting personality which comes through in his talks, his tweets. We've listened to many of his podcast appearances as well. Whenever you listen to him, you always go away entertained, but also with some nuggets of insight. And Alchemy is a perfect reflection of uh, Rory Sutherland's work as an ad man, but also a uh, enthusiast of behavioral uh, sciences. To illustrate the takeaway of the book, I'd like to take an example. We came up with an idea long back to address a problem that we had even long before we had heard of Rory Sutherland. So the problem was that we had a learning event and this was thrown open to different business units and we actually were encouraging a lot of people to take part. So because it was being done in a scalable fashion, we said, Everybody who can benefit from this should participate. And so we sent out calls for nominations to these to different points of contacts in different units. And the response was underwhelming. So we were puzzled. We said, it's free, it's open, it's good for them, they know it. But still, they sent us a couple of nominations at best. So the next time we ran this, we tried a different idea. And that sort of seemed illogical at, at one point. So we said to each, and we wrote a sort of a stern letter asking for nominations. We said, you can only send up to five nominations in your group. If you have to send more than that, then you'll have to get in touch with us and take our permission. So when we did that, we suddenly got five, and in some cases, even more nominations from people. So what happened here? So when we, our explanation for that is that for the point of contact, the whole situation got reframed from something that was happening and they had to think of whom to send to a game that they had to that, that they had to meet a certain target and it became like a game and in many cases they had to fill those five slots and we also designed the whole form that said that here are those five names that you have to send us so the big takeaway is that sometimes pure logic can lead us astray and we should make a place for what Rory Sutherland calls psychology. So this can involve the human psychology, emotions, framing, context, and suddenly you can have, you can meet your targets as, as someone who's doing an event. And if I'm not wrong, Rory Sutherland lives in a castle-like structure as well, right? I think he got it at, for a bargain and decided to live there. So fits perfectly with the person. Yeah, I wouldn't, you know. yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. So this, your comment reminded me of one of our favorite uh, TV series, uh, Jonathan Creek, where the lead character designs illusions for a magician and lives in a windmill. So again, when you see that and you see he is living in a windmill, you know that this is a different sort of a person. And if Rory Sutherland isn't living in a castle, we definitely should get him one. <laughs> so you've already given an example of how we have used ideas from this book in our work. Any other example that you can think of, Ramana? Yeah, what the book actually gives you the permission to do is to think of more ideas than what pure logic or maybe even data or surveys would have told you. And I think that is the larger mindset behind the book. That don't restrict yourself to just the more conventional ideas that come to your mind first. To give you an example of this, in the last couple of years, uh, we've seen how everyone has gone remote, learning is undergoing a lot of changing, people are trying to take charge of their own learning. But this can mean that there are a lot of topics that people should know about but don't necessarily get into. Uh, and so we need to persuade them to do that. So one example of this was a, a course on storytelling that uh, we wanted innovators who come from a technology background to take up. So these were techies very good at the nuts and bolts of producing software projects around new ideas, but lack the ability to tell stories around them and therefore influence interest in those. So uh, to address it, we didn't want to do a, a regular training program. We did not see any merit in some off the shelf course for them. So we decided to design what we called a drip course. The idea behind a drip course is just like you water plants regularly, we said that we will send you curated content and we will design little challenges and you do this at your own pace each week. 
So a drip course goes against a lot of things that you take for as convention standard. or as yeah standard or even dogma when it comes to learning, which is that people have to be forced to take up. There will be a lot of close monitoring. There will be some penalties for not showing up. This was nothing like that. This was the opposite of all of that. It was come as you can, opt in, take it at your own pace, just sync up from time to time with the rest of the course. And uh, fortunately, we had someone from our client side who was also bold enough to try it out and not say that, no, this is not going to work. They, instead, they said that this is perhaps an approach that we need because not every time can we force people to uh, do this. And their confidence was uh, borne out because at the end of this program, people actually came in and said, this was very useful. And this was actually in the middle of our second wave in India. Uh, and so people appreciated the fact that they had that flexibility to manage their schedules in an interesting way. So I think books like this just give you that confidence that don't go with the tried and tested. It's try the untested path as well. So what are people missing out by actually not applying these ideas that uh, come from this book? Again, take something that Rory Sutherland has talked about, which is, he says most people, when they want to get an idea implemented, they start with force, then they, it gives way to bribery through incentives, and then eventually they try persuasion. And he says, why don't you do it the other way around? Why don't you start with persuasion? Because persuasion is cheap and it also has the benefit that it treats the other person as an adult who can you know, take calls on their uh, own. And yes, you want to tilt the balance like any good lever in your favor. He says, persuade, then you can apply the other things as well in conjunctions. And a lot of the persuasion tactics, they are in the realm of uh, what he calls psychology. So uh, I would say that for a lot of people listening to this, you may not have the power or you may not want to use your power to force people to do things. Instead, if you use persuasion, you will make better friends, you will have the outcomes that you, you are keen on, and you can use that relative amount of uh, force uh, and use that kind of capital when and only when you need to use that gunpowder. So keep that powder dry for the day you need to do it. The rest of the time, start with something like persuasion. Extremely important part of the Upleveler's toolkit and I will end this with my favorite line by Rory Sutherland which actually sums up his philosophy in life, right? What he says that the, the, a flower is just a weed with an advertising budget. So <laughs> that, that sums I, up I, Sutherland. I, yeah, and I want to add one more line which are, again is there in the book which is if you don't do anything differently, you will not get the lucky accidents. I think whether you look at it from a resilience point of view, whether you look at it as an innovation point of view, we know that serendipity and randomness do play a role in them. Since you talked about flowers, have many flowers, try different seeds and you'll never be surprised by what you can grow. All right. That's all for this episode. Thanks a lot, Raman. Thank you.